Hey guys, Amanda here. So, um, I'm making this video because I guess I just need to talk about this and uh, it's bothering me and well, I don't see my counselor until next week and I don't know. Well, anyway, the support group that I attend um, as most of you know, I am a facilitator, so basically you're just guiding people in the way of just keeping them in the here and now, you know, just talking about stuff that's relevant to the mental health support group, you know, it's not like I'm, we're dictators or we're leaders, it's just, so the so the group has a, um, the support group has a focus, you know, a direction, I guess you could say. And I, there was a couple people, one who on occasion would come in if they're, if if they were needed and then there was another one who did come a lot um, who was there when I first started going and um, for a while that person wanted to kind of just not have that responsibility so I kind of took over but it's not like I felt like this is my position or anything basically the more the merrier it's actually better to have more than one, and um, that person and the other person told <laughs> the other person that's usually there for the family half of things that they are not going to come back because of me. And they said that I don't let them be facilitators. <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, and, uh, I don't know, they just, they said that, um, when, when they were there, I just basically didn't even consider them and they didn't like the fact that they felt that they weren't part of the facilitating process. Well, um, I think it's really shitty that they blame me for their own actions and thoughts and emotions. Two, I never once stepped on anybody's toes. In fact, one of these persons um, insulted a lot of people in the group, all on this person's own, no help from me, while they were facilitating. I was just there is an anchor and uh, most of the group was very disturbed by that person and didn't want that person to come back and then the other person um, that person I don't think has liked me from the beginning and I have never stepped on this person's toes this person has, in fact, yelled at me before. Um, you know, has, has actually done and said some things that are very inappropriate and unethical, in my opinion, and very rude and, you know, dismissive of me in general, even before I became a facilitator. And... And this person said that I directly said to them that they are going to do this, 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 or whatever. And as though I ordered them to do something. <clears throat> I didn't order anybody 
to do anything. All I did was express how I felt. I don't feel comfortable doing X. That's all I said. And I never said, you have to do this. You're going to do that. And that never happened. So I'm just, it, it, it bothers me because these two people use me as a scapegoat. And now it makes it look like I'm some bad person who doesn't care, um, who dictates to people, and all this stuff that is not me. And at the meeting, it was a combined, so that person who talked about it with me said, you know, on Thursday night that I did a great job. Like, that's exactly what this person would expect out of a facilitator. And I said, well, how it was tonight is how it is when you're not here on the pier nights. I said, I don't do anything different, so can you please tell me where these two people got these ideas? You know, and then we were talking and I said, you notice that because apparently they had complained months ago. I guess this was, sorry, no, these incidents happened months ago, yet almost, maybe a month ago they decided to bring it up. And they had plenty of time in between to say something if they had a problem, but you know what, they didn't. And at the same time, this stuff always happened when on the night set the other person wasn't facilitating because that person's a family member. So after we talked, I, I think this person realized that maybe these people were a bit out of line. Um, I'm not saying that their emotions about it are wrong, that's not what I'm saying, but using me as a scapegoat and lying, I don't approve of it all. And uh, I don't know, it just bothers me that no matter where I go, people always try to shit all over me. And um, I've taken a lot of crap from some of the people in there, and I just let it go, but I can't believe that these two people, one of them outright refuses to go there if I'm there, period. And the other one is like, well, I really don't want to, but if you absolutely can't find anybody else, then maybe, kind of attitudes. I do not like when people blame other people for their own choices. It's ridiculous. I am not like what they said. And the other facilitator who I spoke with knows that. I said, I've been coming here for almost four years now. I said, you know how I am here. I said, do I act that way? Would you consider what they said to be truthful based on your own experiences? And when he started thinking about it, he was like, you know what, you're right. You're not like that. And I said, you know, th there was more to the conversation, but pretty much they're blaming me for stuff that has nothing to do with me. And I know logically I shouldn't feel bad, but I do because I don't want people to think that I am a mean person or that I tell people what to do or anything. The only person I tell what to do is my son. <laughs> and that's a totally different thing. It's different. So, I don't know. It just, it bothers me. I don't know why, really, where it's coming from, but it bothers me. But at the same time, the two people that had an issue are two people that I really didn't feel comfortable being with at the meetings anyway. So, in a way, it worked out, I guess. I just don't like that, yet again, somebody blames me. At least I own my stuff. 
I own what I say and do. Other people, they at least these two don't. Anyway, that's my rant. I haven't really talked about it. And hopefully now that I have, I will feel better about it after a while. Oh well. That's just life, I guess. Alrighty. Hold on a second. I want to read this to you guys. <laughs> the popsicles have little, little question things. Was it a riddle? Yeah. Okay. What do skeletons order at a restaurant? Can you think? Can you think? What do skeletons order at a restaurant? <gasps> do you want to know the answer? Spare ribs. Ah ha 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 ha. Okay. No, it seriously says that. <laughs> See, wait, wait, this way. See, what do skeletons order in a restaurant? Spare ribs. <laughs> okay, all right, well, I'm going to go now. <sighs> Thanks for listening to me. It's probably a boring video anyway, but I just needed to get it off my chest. So, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And there's a couple of you I just realized that have, you've emailed me. Um, and I didn't realize, and one of you had said that you were doing something for a project. Um, and I, I don't know if you're still doing it, but I am going to email you back anyway. And hopefully that you can use it, and even if you can't use it for your project, um, maybe you can use it for something else. Alright, I'm going to go now. Take care, everybody. Bye.